Good morning, children. I am your social science teacher. I will continue with the chapter Natural Vegetation and Wildlife. Under this, the subtopic is Conservation of Natural Vegetation. When I say conservation of natural vegetation, it is nothing but we should not cut trees and clear forests. So, cutting of trees and clearing the forest is called as deforestation. Understand children? So, trees are renewable resources. How can you say that it is a renewable resource? Because it will take a long time to regenerate. And they should be conserved. Understand children? It takes a long time to regenerate and we have to conserve the trees. So, reckless cutting of trees should be checked. We should not cut trees. Okay? The area under forest cover should be increased. We should not touch the forest area. The practice of shifting agriculture should be discouraged. A large number of trees should be planted to secure our future needs. We need, once when the population is growing, our needs are more. So for our needs, we have to plant more trees. You may think why we should plant more trees. We need wood for our furnitures, for cooking food also children. Village side, they need wood for cooking food, furnitures, for medicines, so etc. For many things, we need trees. Awareness should be created among the people of all communities about the importance of forest. It's not only for the Adivasis, the homes and gods who are there in the forest. Only they should not think about the forest. We should tell to all the community of people who are there not to cut trees in the forest and not to destroy forest children. So now the distribution of wildlife. When I say it is a distribution of wildlife, it is an essential part of our ecosystem. As I told you in the beginning, what is an ecosystem? Survival of all living beings over there. Both natural vegetation and wildlife are interlinked. They are interlinked, I have told you. They depend on each other. The natural vegetation provides a natural habitat to all the animals children. Then it provides space for growth and movement, food and water and a place for breeding and raising their young ones. So animals of different regions adapt themselves to their respective habitats. So therefore what happens here is in natural vegetation area determines the type of wildlife available there. So now, let us study the distribution of animals in different continents as per the landforms of those continents. See children here, when I say Africa, these are the African animals here. The main African animals here are elephants, rhinoceros, It is not shown here. It is rhinoceros, hippopotamus. Hippopotamus, it's there on the top, second animal. Hippopotamus, pythons, crocodiles, gorillas, apes, chimpanzees, and all these animals live in the equatorial forest that is deer, giraffes, zebras and stags are also found in the grasslands. Camels and ostriches are found in the deserts. So you all know about these animals. You would have heard the names. Now you are seeing all the animals on the screen children in the video. Next is South America. So this is about South American animals children. It is a rich diversified 
wildlife is seen in South America. It is the habitat for Rihar. It's a flight, flightless bird children. It's not here. It's a flightless bird. Condor, the largest bird of prey. And hummingbird. And different types of parrot, anaconda. One of the largest snakes in the world. Crocodile, alligator, python, llama, puma, jaguar, alligator, monkey and giant turtle. All these are being found here. And anteaters and armadillos are ancient mammals of South America children. So the next one is about North America. See what I am telling about is only the wild animals and birds which live in these countries. The northern part of North America experiences very cold climate children there. So therefore most of the animals found here have thick fur. You can see how it will be there. And they keep themselves warm. So animals found here are reindeer, arctic fox, musk fox, sable, mink, polar bear and blue fox. So these are the animals found in North America children. The next one is Europe. See Europe has limited wildlife. The main animals found here are the polar bear, wolf, wild boar, wild sheep, antelope, rabbit, deer and hare are also found in Europe. The fur bearing animals such as mink, ermine and sable are now raised on fur farms. Partridges, ducks, larks, cuckoos, skylarks and nightingales are the birds that live in Europe. The next one is Asia. See Asia experiences varied climate and hence it has got varied wildlife like monkeys, sloths, leopards, tigers, elephants, lions. All these are found in the tropical areas and in the temperate region you can find cranes, bears, foxes, linux, minks, sables, polar bears, muskox and arctic fox are found in the tundra region. So throughout Asia we can see all these animals children. The next one is Australia. See when I say Australia you will all be knowing about kangaroo. Yes. So Australia is a home to marsupials. Marsupials are also called as mammals children. You know what is a mammal? A mammal is which gives birth to young ones. Who carry their young ones in a pouch near their stomach. You would have seen. See there kangaroo. Kangaroos and koalas are found in only in Australia. The duck build, platypuses, emus, lyrebirds, kingfishers and kookaburras are also found here. See kookabura is here. So this is about Australian wild animals. And the next one is Antarctica. See the water body that surrounds the continent of Antarctica has creatures ranking from small krills to whales. Penguins are native to this continent. You can see the penguin on the top to the right hand side. Yes. And snow petrel that resembles a white dove is also found here. A number of seals and albatrosses are found near the coastal areas children. This is about the Antarctic. So when I say wildlife in India, the wildlife in India has a vast range of animals like tigers, elephants, Asiatic lions, one horned rhinoceros, leopards, snow leopards, deer, antelopes, monkeys, crocodiles and alligators are some of the animals found in India. And India is also home to 
thousands of species of birds like peacocks, parrots, kingfishers, ducks, pigeons and cranes. So these are about wildlife in India. The next one is we have to conserve wild animals children, wildlife. Since time immemorial humans have depended on wildlife for their existence. In olden times humans domesticated animals like sheep, dogs, goats, horses, cows and camels. Over a period of time children human activities started posing a threat to wildlife. And with the passage of time, a great amount of damage was caused by humans and human beings. And see children, now I will be showing you a map. This is about the national parks and wildlife sanctuaries in India. These are the places. You should also take a map and mark all these places. Highlight it and color it children. So, the following steps should be taken in the directions in this national parks and wildlife sanctuaries to protect the endangered species. We have to protect the children. Poaching and hunting of animals have been prohibited and many laws have been enacted in this regard. Awareness programs such as Vanamohotsava are encouraged to replenish the flora. Vanamohotsava is nothing but Planting of trees. Biosphere reserves have been set up where multiple land use is permitted to preserve biodiversity children. And awareness is being created all over the world for protection of wildlife. See children in cities, it is an international agreement between governments that stands for the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. Cities has banned the trade of products made from endangered species. So this is about my lesson. And there is a mind map on page number 155. You all have to do it in your homework book. And finally I will send you the question and answers. And a worksheet will be given children to you all to work out. Thank you. Have a nice day.